All right, guys. How's it going? Long time. Oh, I've been grinding through Teal Street bugs and other things. Um, but, anyways, let's um, uh, let's talk trading for a minute. I'm glad to hear that, Victon. Um, yeah, I've got a bunch of serious stability things that I, I think I can. I, I'm I'm re this I'm rearchitecting the public data WebSocket stuff, and I think that's going to solve a huge number of our problems. But let's talk about trading. Ooh, actually, let's let's not talk for a second. Hold on. Um, I'm going to buy this, by the way. Close. Um, I also have 58k puts that I'm going to. Um, <laughs> it's only 10x long sheet. I know, right? Mountain. It's like. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing about sheep. Like, I know it's a joke, but it also is such a ridiculous top indicator. I hate to say it, but like, sheep, sheep doing what it's doing is such a terrible, terrible indicator for the state of things. I hate to say it. Anyways, okay, I'm going to buy this. Um, I have a bunch of puts that have 58K strike. I'm going to hedge half of them by buying futures, which essentially flips them into calls. So I'm going to take half of my puts, buy Bitcoin, such that they basically will become calls effectively. And the other half I'll leave. Um, so that's my plan. They expire tonight. Expire in about 10 hours. Yeah. Is that right? No, eight hours. Which is part of the reason why I'm hedging them, half of them, because I don't, I mean, we're consolidating here, which I do think is kind of ridiculous. Um, and maybe we do just consolidate in the 58K range, but I don't know. If I, if I buy, uh, if I buy, if I buy a bunch of, Longs. If I if I go long for half, what's up, Flood? How's it going? Eva. Yeah, I know. No. Anyways, if I buy a bunch of uh, calls, basically, if I'd be buying calls, if I if I long and I have these puts, they become calls, and then I think we'll either break down or break up in the next eight hours. And if if either of those happen, I'll make money in theory. Yeah, Shiba's Shiba's terrifying for a lot of reasons. Mostly though, it's just because the fact that the whole market doesn't look great, and then Shiba is here just doing doing. <laughs> wow, that was fun. Anyways, the only thing you can do with Shiba right now, in my opinion. Uh, you stop trading on FTX with your main trading account. I am still taking swings on FTX right now, but this month I'm just focusing on on Bybit. Um, yeah, the only thing you can do is Sheeb. Look, I mean, if you know, you can't call the top and dangerous to long it. But uh, what you can do is, is just wait. And if you get a blow off top or something where you can define your risk with reasonable conviction, that's when you can start looking to, to short it or to just scalp the volatility. There'll be a few days where Sheeb is going to just provide unbelievable opportunities to scalp both longs and shorts. Essentially, as soon as we get a blow off top on Sheeb, my plan will be to m more or less just long, long big dips and short big rips and just try and milk the range. And then eventually I'll try and settle into a short and see if I can ride it down. But um, until then, there's nothing to do. Bookmark it, set some alerts if you want to. Don't short it. Just short with very tiny size. Yeah, you can just do that, but I will I will say that that very tiny size can quickly balloon into big size. 
what happens with this idea, it's like, oh, I'll just short with, and I've been there. I mean, speaking from experience, what, ha what I do whenever I've tried to convince myself that I'll short with quote unquote, very tiny size, I start out shorting with very tiny size. Then what happens is over time, it keeps going against me. So I keep adding. And then before I know it, my very tiny size ends up not so tiny anymore. And I'm basically end up with a shit entry with not tiny size shorting some un, you know, unrealistic altcoin that's just doing or whatever, some shit coin that's doing something like Sheeb. So my, my, my point, I guess, is like, sure, if you're really gonna just short with tiny size, but I will warn you that it's very hard to not let that tiny size balloon into not so tiny size. I really think you're better off leaving Sheeb alone and don't even get involved until something happens. Set alerts so you can keep an eye on it. It'll be obvious. Twitter will shout out for exactly. N nailed it. That was my thing with, with Doge. Anyways, Twitter will be a storm with um with Sheeb tweets once once it blows off. So my advice is to just chill. And once there's something a, a change in market structure then we can talk about sheep until then it's not worth it i mean i just checked well let's just look at it for a second it doesn't look like a top <laughs> I, hate, I hate to say it absolute garbage does not look like it wants to stop i mean like yeah like this could be the top but like no, it could it could also just do another one of these even bigger right like <laughs> there's no reason why this can't be the top and if it does this there's no reason like there's just no i mean obviously there's like a market cap issue where in theory in theory the market cap will get to be too absurd but the problem is that that the the market cap of a coin doesn't actually limit its short term price so obviously if you want price to want price to um, sustainably reach a level and actually hold that level, you need to do so realistically. So the market cap can't be so absurd that it doesn't make any sense. But with short-term price action, there is no reason that the market cap of, of SHIB can't do something absolutely bonkers that makes no sense. Because the price is just a small section of everybody, right? So in the short term, there's only a small number of people trading relative to the entire ecosystem. So for a brief period of time, it's very possible that Sheeb's market cap can become something so un unbelievable that it just is, you know, feels impossible. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it can't keep going up, right? So what I'm trying to say is don't justify shorting by convincing yourself of some market cap argument. If you're using a market cap as justification for why you should be shorting, shorting it, it's not a good justification. It's a good justification that someday it's going to crash because there is no way that Sheeb is worth this much. But it's not a good justification for you not getting fucked in the short term before it crashes. You look at even like um, Nikola. This is like the the the, the equities story, but uh, you know the the truck company, whatever Trevor Milton thing. And it, it, the uh, market cap was more than Ford, right? In like the first day or two it listed. That's like, that's not because Nikola was more valuable than Ford, even though its market cap was more than Ford. It's because everybody trading Nikola's stock represents a microcosm of opinions and the actual value information. So in a very short time frame. A small number of people can have very irrational takes on a company, but they alone can actually cause the value of that company to balloon, even though the entire picture says that that doesn't make sense. So for a short period of time, it's realistic that Steve could do something irrational. That's all. It doesn't look, I think it does actually blow up top. Uh, but so far it's like, I don't know. I mean, sure. I guess here, uh, real. Here's my question, though. It's like this could be a blow off top, right? But why? Why can't it do one more candle? Like, 
There's nobody, there's no reason it can't have another one of these, right? I'm just saying, like, it's possible. But it's also possible it's not. So anyways, that's all I'm saying. Um, just, you know, there's ways to make money. I'm sure I don't have any, but I don't have any good advice. That's all I'm trying to say. So if you feel like you've got a strategy for this, then that makes sense. What does my assignment? It's a good question. Um, you should have checked your your extra paid subscription. You should you should DM CryptoFace since I'm sure you guys are homies. Yeah. Um. But it, it one what is really obvious is how much um liquidity is getting just totally pulled out of majors into into um basically into into sheeb <laughs> sheeb is just just totally sucking liquidity out of the market um a few things to take into consideration right now one of them is the S&P does not look great you said carrier pigeon uh I missed you, Mountain. Where is it? Yeah. Um, this isn't great. Not going to help anything. Um, Anyways, okay. Um, doing uh, some stuff. Un momento. Okay, um, yeah, so essentially, also look at this candle on BitMEX. What the fuck happened? I didn't even notice this while I was looking at the chart the other, like a uh, little, little while ago. Anybody, can anybody explain, was this, is this, was this just a scam wick that only happened on BitMEX? Ridiculous, what an absolute shit show. It pumped on BitMEX before the wick. Pretty funny, actually. Pretty funny. Um, all right. Well, at this point, um, so yeah. So my my puts are at fifty eight k strike. Um, oh, hold on, laps here. Okay. Yeah, puts it 58k strike. I've basically already started longing. Um So, I've flipped about half of my puts in calls by longing futures. Um so if we bounce up here in the next 8 hours, I'll make money. If we keep scamming down, I will make money. The only way I won't make money is if we expire around 58k. So, if we are at 8k in about 8 hours, I will not make money. I'll lose I'll lose um the premium I paid for my puts basically. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. The premium wasn't that much. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that the fact that we have consolidated in the 58s for a couple of hours for like, I don't know, 10 hours or something. How much would I lose? I think I paid about $300, $350 per put, well, per contract, one contract is worth one Bitcoin. So that means that I have to, um, you know, for each contract, 
has to be $300 in the money for me to start making money. $300 for 58k strike put. I bought it yesterday. That's why. I bought it at I bought it when we were trading at 60.5k, I think. 60.8. I bought it before this next level breakdown. Do I still hold um do I still hold BTC spot? I am holding mostly spot still, but that's part of why I bought the put. Um yeah, why aren't you hearing options? Well, don't don't get too excited, Mountain. Um, the options situation is not that great. The spread is absolutely garbage on. So I, I'm trading them on FTX. If you have access to Deribit, then I 100% think that trading options is a, a viable strategy. If you don't have access to Deribit, you're going to be stuck with FTX as probably second best right now. And anyways, um, It's the same as options where if it, yeah, it's just options are options. So the put, so um, hold on. I, I think I did a video on this a, a while back, but let me see if I can pull up. Give me one second. Uh. All right, cool. So on FTX, they have a quote system. Basically, um, oh, but it's because I well, what? But that's no, no, no. So, so uh, mountains because I didn't buy it just now, right? But actually, though, I, it's because I bought it when it was like two thousand dollars out of the money. That's why. But let's just see what a fifty-eight k. Um, but expiring tomorrow or expiring in eight hours cost us right now. Still 393. There you go. 400 bucks. Oh, that's only a little bit more than I paid. And when I bought it, it was substantially out of the money. Obviously the reason it's, it's not, it's because of the theta decay that it's still reasonably priced. Um, I'll show you why this is like still so fucked though. Can you sell the options back? Yeah, so you can sell the options back, but it's li not liquid exactly. It's super, oh, hold on a second. It's super illiquid. Um, and you can't exercise them early either. They are, um, the European style options. So you can't exercise them early and you you can sell them back, but uh, it's very hard to sell them back efficiently, right? Um, because the spread, the spread is just garbage. So the difference between the buy and the sell prices is terrible. What did she do? Oh, I don't have this thing saved. Yeah, so far so good. Real, real may have sniped it. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, speaking of sniping it, I, I am going to legitimately set. I'm going to set me some uh, some stink bids on the sheep. <laughs> Here's the thing about these coins is they're not going to just die all at once. So it's not like sheep is going to just, um, sheep. Sheep is not going to just go straight to zero, right? It is going to probably take multiple bounces. So, um, 
Sheeb. Why is he pronouncing it like she? It's pronounced that's why it's that's how that is how it's pronounced. The coin is named after a Shiba Inu, which is a dog. So I would pronounce the coin named after a Shiba Inu. Shortened to Sheeb, pronounced Sheeb. How would you pronounce it? Shib? Yeah, but that doesn't that I mean Shiba Inu. It's it's short. Sheeb is short for Shiba. So that is that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, this is the one time where there's an actual correct pronunciation, unfortunately. <laughs> No fact. Okay, I'm setting bids on 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 sheep though. No joke. No joke. I'm actually gonna set some bids here. If we wick down, I'm gonna I'm, I'm looking at uh on K the K sheep. Six six cents, six point five cents, something like that. YOLO. How much did Doge retrace after the first 50%? That's a good question. What was the coin that you almost got liquidated months ago? Um, are, we, are we buying this? This is not a team game. <laughs> We're not doing anything. I have no idea. Do I look like I know what I'm doing? I think I know what I'm doing. Think again. Is uh five thousand is six two five hundred. Yeah, I'm setting some YOLO bids. But I'm going to do this. Um, hold on. Anyways, yeah. Um, she cannot get <laughs> Only if it's negative, I'll give away more, uh, more Sam debt. YOLO. So this only works with really low leverage, basically. Don't don't get fucked, please. <sighs> Flex, you won, didn't you? Yeah, you you won. Uh, you you owe me money still. I think to this day. What am I doing? That is a great question. What am I doing? Um, yeah, I have no idea. Um, let's look at ETH. ETH is just doing the same thing as, as Bitcoin. I mean, if you long right now anything, you've got to be prepared to run the blows. So if you're going to start longing here, just, I don't know, risky because we're still probably going to take these lows somehow. I do think you could scale, start scaling in though, and then add more, add more in here with a stop. 
somewhere down here. But I don't think you can put a stop any higher than this. If you put a stop any higher than this, your just chances of getting fucked are too high. So let's say you did take this. Here's here's let's just do this exercise again. You take this trade, right? Put your stop here, you're targeting all time highs, okay? Right. Seems reasonable. This is like a three R trade, right? Right? Not bad. Now let's just say that instead of buying right now, you're patient and you wait for it to go to 3920 to get in. Your 3.17 R trade turns into um drag this, yeah. Take this to 320. That turns it into a 5 R trade, right? So you can get in now for a 3 R trade, or you can try and wait for his dip and get in with a 5 R trade. Right. And of course, obviously this gets this just gets more and more aggressive. You know, if you can get in on a wick down to 3893, now you're looking at a seven R trade, right? The difference the difference is just enormous. A three R trade versus a seven R trade. Right? Almost eight. So my my I'm not saying you shouldn't start scaling in now, um, potentially, but I would I would definitely layer some bids. Um you've got like this, this is a pretty Pretty good level here to target, I think, for an entry. I would look to maybe get something in around 3919. If you did that, now you're still looking at like a 5.5 R trade, right? Almost a 6 R trade. That's a pretty good trade. It's a lot better than than this 3 R trade, is a six, almost a 6 R trade, right? Double your, you can double your expected value on this trade, essentially. Not expected value because the probability changes, but you can double the, the risk reward ratio at least. Um all right guys. I think the fact that we've been consolidating here for a little bit does let me I mean I, I think that the most likely thing now is to run the lows and then bounce at this point. I feel like the the nuke situation this is more of a grind a grind down thing, which is which sucks, but um but it's not as violent as an as a nuke. But we still can nuke, obviously, use stop losses. I do think that we'll get a, a bounce, though, if we run the lows, either a complacency bounce or potentially maybe that's the bottom, right? So I'm going to long, we can get down here. That's it. Odds for double top daily. Double top meaning that we, we get back up to, to uh, the 67 level. I mean, it's it's definitely, it's like, so as of right now, I'm not even thinking about that. What I'll say is um, if we start bouncing and something, and we can kind of like get up to here, then, um, you know, it's possible, but I honestly think if we get back up to the daily highs, I, I don't see why we wouldn't continue. At this point, the reason why things, things are really just looking like garbage right now, but, um, Watch the full chart. Do you mean this? Do, are you saying what are the odds that this is a double top? Is that what you're asking? What are the odds that this is a double top? Yeah, what are the odds that this is a double top? I mean, for 20%, 30%, 25%, 20%? I don't know. Uh, this is This is where... Um, I'll say two things. One is I'm not I'm not particularly good at at sort of like these kind of um, high time frame guesses or whatever. The second thing is I, I don't think anybody can know. So the the more you try and guess about the higher the time frame when it comes to predictions, the less accurate um, you're going to be. Right. So uh, on a very low time frame trade. You you can um, estimate more accurately what's going to happen because things are just happening in the moment. When it comes to like trying to figure out if this is a double top on the daily, like I don't think anybody can give you a good answer, right? It's certainly possible, but there's not really any tools that I can give you that'll like. And can you update the situation with Sheeb? Uh, I mean, what about what about it? I, I, I'm basically, so this could be the blow off top. Um, I'm not so sure, but um, 
if we get a blow off top, I'm just going to scalp the range. So essentially what I'll do if we get a blow off top, it'll be easier to, let me just do the regular sheep, not K sheep. Um. <laughs> Missed you, Mountain. Okay. Basically, uh, define your risk, um, find the range, and then scalp the range. So if we can get a blow off up and retest like this area, something in here, then I'll use the top of the range with a little bit of, let's say this is the blow off top. Then I'll give it a little bit of room at the top, and then I'll just scalp this. So I'll just, I'll just take longs here. Because you know, what I'll expect is that it'll do something like this. Right? And then... I mean, that's how these things, like, usually do. Something like that. Something ridiculous. So my plan will be to more or less just scalp this. So I'll just try and fade as we get close to the top of the range. I'll long as we get close to the bottom of the range. I'll do this a few times. If we do it too many times... I will stop, especially, you know, whatever. Um, and then I'll leave it alone. And then if I can get a good short, I'll try and short. So the step one is scalp, scalp the volatility after the blow off top. After a couple of days of doing that, step two is going to be to try and get a good entry on a short. So then I'll wait and try and see if I can get something good to short. Step three, set your stop loss, loss and hope it eventually bleeds out to zero. That is, that's how I'm going to play it. <sighs> All right. That's it, guys. I'm going to get to work. Peace.